Hi, welcome all of you to my presentation on the FRM Part 2 May 2022 exam. In this video, we are going to talk about the curriculum update between 2021 and 2022 for FRM Part 2, the impact of the same and what your exam schedule should be given the time frame that we all are pitched in, uh, keeping in mind the May exam window. So, as before, uh, the topic areas wait, let's first discuss. Uh, so you have six topic areas, market risk measurement, credit risk measurement, operational and integrated risk measurement, liquidity and treasury risk, risk and investment management, and current issues. And the respective weight areas for this is market risk, operation risk, and credit risk. All of them carry 20% weight each while the liquidity risk and risk and investment management carry 15% weight each and the current issues is imparted a 10% weightage. Now, between 2021 and 2022, uh, there has not been any change whatsoever between in, in as far as the market risk measurement and management topic area is concerned. In fact, uh, market risk measurement and management, credit risk measurement and management and uh, operational and integrated risk and management. These three areas have been fairly unchanged save a couple of chapters that have been added in the operational risk area. So we're going to discuss at length about these three topic areas first because these three topic areas consist of 60% of your exam weightage and curriculum. So the market risk and topic area, market risk management, uh, they have spread over 16 uh, chapters. Uh, encompassing five sectional areas and those five sectional areas uh, will be VAR, uh, modeling dependence, uh, term structure of interest rates and volatility, volatility smiles and term sheet and fundamental review of the trading book. As far as VAR is concerned you would be learning the parametric and the non-parametric VAR, backtesting of VAR, expected shortfall and the other current risk measure. Basically, it's more of an extension of what you have already studied as far as your book four was concerned in part one, that is valuation and risk model. Coming to the credit risk and management area, uh, it's spread over 17 chapters, uh, encompassing seven sections or topical areas, as I may call it. Credit analysis, definition of risk, as far as quantitative methods are concerned, expected loss and unexpected loss, counterparty risk, credit derivatives, structured finance and securitization. So these are the six topic areas which have 17 chapters embedded in them. In credit analysis, of course, you're going to study the different models of credit analysis, the perspective of the credit analyst, how the profiling of an individual client, that is a retail client and an institutional client like that of a mega corporate is done as far as the banks are concerned. Then you will also understand that the different quantitative methods encompassing the expected loss and the unexpected loss. For example, the credit value adjustment, uh, the debit value adjustment and the bilateral credit value adjustment. You'd also be learning about counterparty risk and the difference between the right way risk and the wrong way risk. Uh, different credit derivatives, for example, the CDS, spread forwards, and the credit link note. Coming to the operational and integrated area, well, they have 27 chapters, and though 27 chapters have remained uh, as they were uh, in LOS in 2021, I'm sorry, in 2021, we had 26 chapters. In 2022, we have 27 chapters. The changes have only been uh, they have omitted the uh, building the UK financial sector's operational resilience and brought in the couple of chapters in lieu of that, uh, operational resilience impact tolerance for important business and principles for operational tolerance. Now, whether this is a good move or not, well, I believe this is a good move because the roundtable conference was a failure that led to the eventual abolishment of LIBOR and what we are going to witness from May 2022 onwards. So in lieu of that, the adjustable uh, reference rates or the alternate reference rates will come into picture. And in, 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 in backdrop of the same, I think this was a good move from GARP. 
keeping in pace with the current changes. Uh, but mind you, the operational risk area have 13 study sessions or sections uh, spread over 27 chapters. Uh, those 13 sessions are uh, mostly got to do with the principles of sound operational risk management. Uh, you'll be learning a great deal about the risk appetite framework and what is meant by the enterprise risk management. Uh, what is the role of uh, the CRO and why CRO is having an increasing importance in any financial institution. You'd also be learning a great deal about risk culture and conduct, which is also part of the Basel II data governance, uh, 2018 and 2013 uh, Banking for International Settlements um, Agreement. Uh, analyzing and reporting operational loss data, uh, you'd be learning about different model risks and model valid validation, uh, different frameworks and uh, the earlier, uh, some of the topics that you would have covered in market risk, for example, the CVA, and the IRB, those things you will be studying again. Okay, so uh, as part of the Basel II, you would also be um, understanding economic capital frameworks and capital planning as part of the regulatory capital requirement is concerned. Uh, different stress testing methods, for example, CCAR, SCAP, uh, and a great deal about supervisory review. Third-party outsourcing of risks will also be discussed and uh, the emergence of the cyber risk and cyber resilience, uh, mostly in the backdrop of the COVID-19. Uh, Basel III, Tier 1 and Tier 2 capital requirement, uh, the SMA metric, the AMA metric, uh, those things will also be taught as part of operational risk. A great deal of Basel will be covered as far as operational risk is concerned. And, uh, you know, it's got to do a lot of uh, stuff with the international banking regulations and the in uh, BCBS uh, uh, norms and uh, 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 agreements. Uh, so, you know, this actually forms a very big core of your parts to curriculum of FRM. So this, uh, apart from this, you'd also be studying liquidity risk. Well, there has not been any change in as far as liquidity risk is concerned. Uh, nonetheless, there are nine sectional areas as far as liquidity risks are concerned, spread over 19 chapters. Uh, and the, the, the key thing that you will be learning as far as your liquidity risk is concerned is the risk and principles metrics. You'll be learning about the liquidity adjusted VAR, the liquidity transfer pricing, uh, what to do uh, in case of a liquidity crisis, how the liens are marked on assets, uh, how to deal with an illiquid asset in case of a liquidity crisis, cash flow modeling, uh, liquidity stress testing, uh, indicators like EWI, OCC, uh, you know, different plans of Fed as far as, you know, monetary policies and expansion and uh, fiscal policies are concerned, the contingency liquidity plan. So these things you will be learning a great deal about as far as your liquidity and treasury risk management is concerned. On the other hand, the risk and investment management has got to do more with the portfolio uh, management part of it. Uh, this borrows a significant portion uh, from the CFL Level 3 curriculum as well, where you will be learning the factor theories. And there are about seven topic areas spread over 11 chapters. Uh, you know, you'll be learning about factor theory, portfolio construction, uh, portfolio risk measures, uh, risk budgeting. Uh, risk monitoring and performance measurement and hedge about hedge funds. Uh, the current issues are the ones, you know, which have actually undergone a complete, a total overhaul, save one chapter. So, um, well, really not much to speak about because the current issues are supposed to be current and GARP actually does a pretty good job uh, about it because they tend to keep in pace with the current changes. So the things that they have brought in is about the fintech and the strategy in 21st century, uh, a great deal about artificial intelligence and machine learning, the impact of COVID-19, uh, LIBOR transition and what's the impact is going to be and climate change. Also, there is a cursory uh, introduction about the rise of digital money, mostly the cryptocurrencies and how the different regulators are going to deal about it. So this is more or less your uh, you know, syllabus, your curriculum for 2022 is concerned. Now, after you know, doing my research at, doing research at my end, uh, what I could understand is 
that as far as 2022 is concerned, well, the impact score is slightly more than the 2021, which means that uh, you might have to study a little bit more than what might, you might have to study in 2021. So for uh, example, credit risk, the impact score is zero because there has not been any update or change. Uh, similarly, if you go to market risk, the, credit, the impact score is again zero, zero because there is no change in number of chapters or the content thereof. But as far as the operational risk is concerned, there have been an introduction of a couple of chapters in lieu of a defunct chapter, as I may say, which increases the impact score by 2%. Similarly, the liquidity and treasury risk, there is no change whatsoever. Risk management and investment also, there is no change whatsoever. But because of a sheer introduction, because of a mere introduction of a new chapter in the current issues, I have assigned a score of plus one. So 1% 1 here and 2% there, it makes it 103%. So this means that whatever you had to study in 2021, you might have to study a 3% more of that or 3% more effort will be required. Well, now coming to the strategy, I've also decided, devised a strategy for all of you. Uh, first, I have uh, you know decoded in terms of the weights, weight you're already all aware of, market risk, credit risk, and operational risk. These three topic areas, these are the heavyweights and they carry 60% of the exam weight. Uh, and on the other hand, you have the liquidity risk, uh, and the risk and current investments carry 15% weightages and the current issues carry a weight of 10%. Uh, but uh, how do you actually plan? How do you actually go about it? Well, you know, as you know, uh, the, the experience that I have had dealing with the parts two candidates and also drawing from my own experience, which is of some time back, of course, uh, I believe the, the amount of effort versus the yield that you have to put in uh, a great deal of effort will have to be put into operational risk management. This is the mother of your part two curriculum and by far the most challenging area because a lot of theoretical stuff is there. A lot of memorization would be required in this part, uh, whereas market risk and credit risk uh, will borrow a substantial amount of concept from part one itself. Um, as far as the risk and investment management is concerned, well, you're going to enjoy that topic. If you have some you know, uh, inclination towards portfolio management uh, and the current issues, of course, is all about uh, memorization and understanding the key things, uh, whatever is happening in and around the world. So I have devised this matrix. So I'm not going to get into the weight part once again. But as far as the effort pass is concerned, well, as you can see that 30 percent of your study schedule is going to be or has to be dedicated towards operational risk. And you should, if you if you have done well, you would be expecting a yield of fifteen percent only. So, uh, uh, well, you know that, that's 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 an Achilles hill, and you need to live with it. That's that's how things are. Uh, that's how actually things actually shape up. Uh, um, um, we we can't do much about it. But look at this current issues. You only spend about four percent of your time, and it's going to yield about twelve percent of the result. Uh, on the other hand, the risk and investment management it will it will command a 10% effort and it will yield 14% of F, uh, of your yield uh, of, of your result. Uh, market risk, credit risk, both are going to be equally balanced as far as effort and yields are concerned. Now, how to proceed? Uh, considering that you have about 126 odd days left, if you're taking the exam in May 2022, that is. Uh, I'm considering that you'll be starting from January 15th. Today is January 13th, the day I'm actually making this video. So this is how I, how I have actually laid it down sequentially how you should approach your preparation. Uh, credit risk, you should start with credit risk. And if you're starting with credit risk uh, on January 15th, uh, you should allocate 19 days to cover up the credit risk portion, at least the first pass, uh, followed by the market risk to start February 3. I look at only 18 days, liquidity risk, 12 days, risk and investment management, seven days, operational risk, of course, is 27 days of your effort are going to be consumed here. And last 40 odd days I have kept for revision and practice. Of course, uh, that's that's required because please understand that, you know, part two is one of the toughest exams I've ever taken. Uh, it, 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 it encompasses over 99 readings. 99 readings uh, as compared to 98 readings of 2021 and and you know it's not going to be an easy task you know 
getting through all of those readings and you know make a solid impact after that so uh, this is what i believe that you should be following and as before if you require a copy of this uh, strategy as well as uh, the curriculum updates do mail me at new avatar 190 at gmail.com that is n-e-w-a-v-a-t-a-r-190 at gmail.com or analystmaster at outlook.com and i'll be more than happy to mail you across this schedule as along with the curriculum update so long happy study